Um, anyway, One Piece LA work is they listen to the source material and work closely with Oda. They did the opposite here. Avatar The Last Airbender creator spent two years developing the live action adaptation uh, for Netflix before they shocked fans by announcing their exit due to the creative differences. Here's the three minute ad break now. More gaming. Okay, maybe I'm dumb, but I actually believe in not copium. I mean, I gamed yesterday. I gamed two nights in a row. And I will continue to game. But anyway, um, regardless, the, the thing I was saying is, is just like, like Avatar. I want to talk about Avatar a little bit. Okay. Every single thing that I've heard about the Avatar live action, which is the first time it's ever been made. Obviously, never. There is no other Avatar. There is no war in Bossing Say. And there is no other Avatar. Okay. If you try to tell me about like M. Night Shyamalan, Shyamalan and his Avatar series, I will say, who is that? Avatar has never existed. There's only one Avatar. And that is the, the, the animated one. So, uh, so much of what I have heard uh, about Avatar in general has just been so disappointing. It happened, you cowards. I don't know what you're talking about. It never happened. You'd be right. I'm going to be talking about Avatar. Avatar The Last Airbender is a beloved franchise from my childhood. It is probably one of my favorite pieces of, of IP of all time, I think. It's phenomenal. It is the closest that like a Western shop has ever gotten to like, you know, doing anime, I guess. Uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, uh, commonly abbreviated to Atla, is an American animated fantasy action television series created by Michael Dante, DiMartino, and Brian Konezuko, produced by Nickelodeon Animation Studio. Okay. And it has everything. Okay, I have often, I've tweeted about this in the past. I've talked about this in the past. Um, it is actually kind of one of the most woke shows out there. But luckily, it was not released in a time when our culture warrior brains have been permanently broken in irreparable ways so that people couldn't like make secondary content off of like how woke it actually is and everybody was just able to consume it. Okay. Um. It's, it's the story, for those of you who don't know, I guess it has like Asian, Arctic-inspired world. Um, there's four elements, water, earth, fire, or air. And uh, these people bend these elements, and it's inspired by Chinese martial arts, okay? And also, I would say, other Asian martial arts as well. And it's awesome. There's like an avatar that's basically like the Dalai Lama, similar process. The avatar comes to life in uh, one of the, it's the same person basically and the same soul being transmitted through multiple different uh, generations. And it's not that good. It is, it's peak. It's actually peak. Um, he gets reincarnated over and over again, but everything changed when the Fire Nation attack. Lord Ozai comes in, fucking, you know, um, kind of ruins the vibes a little bit. And then uh, they do a genocide on all the airbenders. Aang is 12 years old. This is far too much for Aang to handle at the age of 12. And he runs away. Okay. And when the world needed... Oh, not uh, Ozai. Sorry, Sozin. When the world needed him the most, right? Aang, little bald guy with the arrow on his head, vanishes. Just watch the fucking trailer. Honestly, I don't know why I did that. I should have just shown you the goddamn trailer, as a matter of fact, because it is literally the best uh, way to describe to you the story. Here. Here. Water. Earth. Fire. And long ago is there anyone who's never seen this is a good question is there anyone who has never seen this like me wait really <sighs> fun i wish dude i'm i'm gonna be honest with you i wish this was my first time watching peak okay i wish this was my first time encountering peak Oh my lord. It's so good. Go. 
the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. A hundred years passed and my brother and I discovered the new Avatar, an airbender named Aang. And although- The thing is, it's so, like, comfy, it's so cozy, it's so fun. And I won't say, Will said he doesn't like it. Yeah, I don't care, okay? Love Will, but like, you know, live your life, everybody. You don't have to, you don't have to get permission from Mr. Cinema, okay? It's good. It's really good. Oh, his airbending skills are great. He has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone. But I believe Aang can save the world. So... Basically, um, yeah, he just has to go and master all the skills that he wasn't able to do in the normal process because of the genocide against the airbenders. And that's the whole story. It's like pretty basic, right? Hero's journey, yada, yada, yada. However, along the way, the friends that he makes uh, are, are incredible. There's like a story about rehabilitation and retribution there is literally like war criminals being rehabilitated, but not in a negative way, like in an actual rehabilitation for war criminals. I'm not talking about like George W. Bush getting rehabilitated because he fucking paints trees and shit. Like, you know, one of the most goaded characters, one of the best characters in the entire, uh, in the entire universe is literally a disabled person. Like, straight up. Toph is like, Toph, Toph, I don't know how I'm going to say it right. Uh, I don't want to fuck it up. But like, and it, it is so, it's so perfectly, like, it's so perfectly intervo interwoven into the story. And um, obviously, uh, yeah, a disabled woman, only because she's short. That's what has her disability. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, and it, it ultimately it's like, it's one of those things where it's one of those things where it's like, it doesn't get in the way at all. Like it's not, uh, it, it's like, it, like they, they tackle these concepts. They tackle concepts like ableism. They tackle concepts like sexism. They tackle concepts such as like childhood trauma and what kind of impact that might have on you in a phenomenal way. Okay in a phenomenal way and i think that it's it's an awesome story for that reason i'm glad that it existed when i was growing up i'm gonna i'm gonna ride yeah it, it tackles duty to country versus moral clarity that's a good one too back then it wasn't woke it was politically correct or pc yeah i mean but it just but absolutely zero people got mad at this shit you know what i mean like no one was going this is really fucked up Yes, uh, as I've talked about before, her disability is known and acknowledged without being heavily handed on a silver plate for the viewer. Like, it's not, it's not like the main thing, you know what I mean? Or, or uh, it's, it's like not heavy handed, basically. Um, same thing with like misogyny. Like one of the, one of the characters, Sokka, goes through his own arc of like learning about how women can also, how his own insecurities have led him to be a misogynistic person, but then is like, is, is, uh, is no longer misogynistic. Like, I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, there's no tokenization. So my point is this, okay? But yeah, they tackle propaganda and its effect on people. Remember when Katara and the Earthbender saved the Earth Kingdom? A uh, citizen who got stuck under the mudfall, and then the Earth Kingdom citizen reported the Earthbender to the Fire Nation. Yeah. <sighs> and it's not like a anime -y at all. It's not like annoying in the way that you would normally see a lot of like anime shit. Like animes do have a lot of like inaccessible boundaries that will put, that'll come across as like genuinely off putting for the average normie who's like, you know, getting involved. So. The point is, it's great. It's a great show. It's a great cartoon. And it's phenomenal. And it, with phenomenal works, it's very difficult to change the original dynamic in which it was created and intended to be consumed. Right? Um, 
And that is unfortunately that's where it ends, basically. The it's good while it lasted. Will called it mid the other day. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. It's very feel good. It feels awesome. It's a lot of fun. And it's good while it lasted. And then now they are, you know, trying to desperately rehash the IP because everything old must become new again because we have no new ideas. Um, and it sucks. So let's get to why I'm talking about it because why am I talking about it? Well, I'm talking about Avatar The Last Airbender because unfortunately they keep teasing new things. Netflix is making a live action version of it again. And they keep adding like new things. They keep leaking new things about it on the timeline that just suck. And it turns out um, the OG creators of Avatar The Last Airbender actually pulled out of this project because they, they had disagreements. What do you mean again? That's true. There's also another... Look, the meme in this community is that there is, a, there is another... There's another Avatar The Last Airbender movie, but I do not acknowledge it because it's the most dog shit. I've actually never watched it. It is the most dog shit piece of shit ever made. It should have never been made at all. Um... And it's messed up. Anyway. So, yeah, if you want to truly experience uh, a, a masterpiece that's like really, 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 really fun to watch and really feel good, I will uh, suggest Avatar The Last Airbender. The Kara series is also fine. The one that followed, it's not as good, but it's still decent. You know? To be fair, the creators made Legend of Korra, which is ideologically very anti-communist, sadly. I know. Um, oh, did I say Kara? Whatever, shut up. Uh, Korra. And it is, um, yeah, it is very liberal. <sighs> but um, let's, uh, let's look at some of, the, uh, some of the idiotic things that have come out so far about it. Uh, one of the things that I saw that was inevitable was... Um, one of the things that I saw that was, was, uh, you know, that made its way into my timeline that very, was very frustrating was this here. I'll read it out. Netflix pushed for the decision to remove Sokka's sexism from Avatar The Last Airbender. Certain areas of Katara's character have also been removed, including some gender issues that didn't quite translate from the cartoon. Now, uh, a couple things I want to point out here. Uh, people originally were very mad that this character wasn't like being portrayed by an actor who's indigenous. And obviously these characters are indigenous characters. Um, turns out he actually fucking is indigenous and everyone just constantly fucking harps on shit like this and it blows up on the timeline. So I looked into it. Okay. You want to know what's uh, is super sad about the situation? Not only is he actually indigenous, He's not from a tribe that is like acknowledged by the federal government, which is why. Yeah, he's from a tribe that is not recognized by the federal government. That doesn't mean he's not fucking indigenous. Okay. People are so dumb. <laughs> yeah. Imagine. Yeah, he's like extra indigenous, okay? It's not recognized by any Cherokee nation. It, listen, he's a fake Cherokee. It's a fake tribe. We don't recognize them. From what I understand, from what I understand, there are a bunch of, there are a bunch of tribes that are not recognized federally at all, partially because one, they've either been completely wiped out or two, or two, they never, um, they never actually made deals with the federal government at all. So now it's just like, it's just completely unrecognized, even if they are literally uh, a, a part of, uh, like, even though they are indigenous. Anyway. <sighs> the blood quantum freaks in the Chinese to back the fuck off. Yeah, I know. White liberals in a vein to be ex ex inclusive end up self reporting by the racism. Yeah.
In Seattle, the Wamish natives are now recognizing they were Seattle's first settlers. Um, this tweet sums up my feelings. Yeah, I saw this, and you'll uh, and we'll talk about that in a second too. So, anyway, regardless of this dude's like uh, uh, this dude's like native background, okay. Beyond this dude's like native background, okay. Um. That's like not the main point that we were going to talk about. That was the original thing that people were mad about, but that like kind of was cast aside. Who gives a shit? Okay. Um, but ultimately, Netflix apparently is pushed to delete like a, a fundamental part of Sokka's journey, which was that he was like sexist. And that was a part of his character development, like learning that he should not be, <laughs> right? That's supposed to be character growth. Uh, I don't know if it's like the Netflix diversity team that is just like, no, you can't even show this at all or what the fuck it is. Like it has to be like a perfect child or something. That was one of the things that they said. They felt like a lot of moments in the original show were iffy. Yeah, it totally adds Eon uh, Osli Sokka. There are things that were redirected just because it might play a little differently in live action. I think that there is not a lot of trust here. With the, the the team developing this now, that's the problem. Having the original, having the the having the original uh, creators of the show not be involved in it, that's a red flag. Um, having this be such a beloved franchise to begin with that they tried to remake in live action, that's already like riddled to the brim with red flags. Considering that someone else has already tried to do this and it sucked. <sighs> And then like make and then basically like neutering the characters. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck uh, they're going for here, and it's very dumb. I think. Um, as Entertainment Weekly notes, their entire Reddit threads about Sokka sexism, discussing how the original Sokka prior to his character's journey would make remarks like "girls are better at fixing pants than guys" and "guys are better at hunting and fighting." Yes, Sokka is supposed to be like a dumbass podcast, bro. Okay. The fuck are we doing? That's like, there are people like this in the real world. This is a very real, this is a very real part of, of how human beings are. Anyway. I don't know. Part of me also, part of me also thinks like, maybe we are like going crazy and overanalyzing it because we don't trust it. Right, that could be it too. That could be part of it. But yeah, overall, apparently the original creators fell out with the Netflix over these changes and in, in putting ad breaks on the show. Oh my God, I thought you were literally talking about ad breaks for a second. That's such a good debate. Fuck you. You did the first one of the day. This is my thing. Only reason I was ever excited was because creators were on board. The moment that they left. Uh, I started to lose faith in this last week's. This last week has destroyed any remaining faith. They also said Aang in the book one doesn't have a guiding reason to head to the North Pole. So they're giving him a vision instead. The whole point is him wandering because he's still afraid to face being the Avatar. Yeah. I I don't know. Oh, shit. These are Sweden. Okay. Uh, we very well may be. They don't have to copy the OG script word for word to make it work. Hope it works. I don't think it's going to work. Okay. I don't think it's going to work at all. Um, because the show itself is like made for kids, but you can definitely consume it as an adult, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, One Piece LA work is they listen to the source material and work closely with Oda. They do the opposite here. Avatar The Last Airbender creator spent two years developing the live action adaptation uh, for Netflix before they shock fans by announcing their exit due to the creative differences. Here's the three minute ad break now, by the way. Don't have a difference with that. Subscribe. Um, which left Kim as a sole showrunner. He recently told Entertainment Weekly that it was absolutely daunting to stick with the show without them. You'd have to be an idiot not to be intimidated a little bit, Kim said. My first reaction after Hell Yeah was, holy shit, do I really want to do this? Is there a way to improve upon the original? 
Whenever you tackle something that's already beloved by millions of fans, you have to ask yourself those questions. Yeah. I think a lot of these like IP recycle opportunities for people like this are oftentimes uh, tackled by people who don't care about the source material, who don't love the source material, who are just in it for a buck to keep it a stack. Okay. And I think that is precisely what's going on. It's like you have to have negativity. You have to have racism. You have to have sexism. You have to have phobias of different variety because they exist in the real world. Like you shouldn't add it on simply because you want to uh, make a point or whatever, because then you're lecturing people and you're not actually uh, you're, you're lecturing people and you're not actually trying to make this to uh, an enjoyable work. Right. Yeah. Ableism. All of those things exist in the real world. That's what makes art good. That's why you can't really fucking AI this shit, you know? There's such a bad problem with media literacy right now, and the studios are making it much worse by dumbing down content. I'm so tired of people trying to cancel a character instead of learning why you shouldn't be like the character. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Like, <coughs> I absolutely, I absolutely despise it. Um, I, I think it's so lame. It is like the liberal version of what these guys do all the time. Like the fucking neck bearded losers do all the time when they're like constantly chirping about like, there's a woman in this show. Like shut the fuck up, dude. Shut up. If it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. Like you don't have to magically be like, well, this concept was actually talked about in the show and it's triggering to me. So I fucking hate it or, uh, it, from either direction, really doesn't matter if your politics are good. doesn't matter. I'm not making like a moral equivalence between bigotry and anti-bigotry. I'm simply talking about this with the framework of content and art and how it should be consumed and, and what it actually means. Okay? What's frustrating about this is that people get very, very invested and think that like movies are real. But they do it either in a woke way where they go, well, movies are real and this character is a bad character. Why did they actually show a bad character here? Or they do it in a movies are real and why is this uh, movie woke? As in like, uh, why is there a black person in this movie? Can't believe they did that. Okay, let's stop calling it content for starters, please. Sure, you're right about that. Anyway. It's vital to improve media as society grows, but I love moments of growth in the original series. DiMartino, Conensico, and Nick Malice created young, flawed characters that grew up and impacted countless young kids who grew into better people because of it. Now, I don't, I don't think that like this show taught me lessons or whatever, but it's a good show, and these parts of the show are important to keep in, in my opinion, because it's just like they exist in the real world, and it's a part of the, the character arc, right? So anyway, um, but yeah, this was a good take. Every time Matt Owens spoke about One Piece, you could tell he grew up and loved that franchise. The passion and knew exactly what made it work. Every time Albert Kim talks about Avatar, you can tell he views animation as a lesser medium. It is so wild to me, and this chat, this person is correct. It's wild to me that they were able to make a better live action rendition of an anime that is virtually impossible to create in live action, like One Piece, instead of Cowboy Bebop, which is tailor-made for live action. Like, Watanabe's work is, one, predominantly focused on a Western audience, and that's why it does way, well, uh, way better in the Western world than it does in Japan, okay? That's 100% true, by the way. Uh, to, and it's, it's usually even a, a, a burden on uh the the actor or not the actor sorry though is a burden on the studio itself that releases this project because like he had was panned critically in japan that you know it just kind of died out and it is mind-boggling to me it is mind-boggling to me that cowboy bebop which is basically a movie like perfectly created to be a movie was was just such a ginormous flub. 
Love Watanabe. Space Dandy is not good. I think Space Dandy is good, but not as good as his other work, obviously. Um, so, but yeah, I think that Matt Owens has so much respect for One Piece and loves One Piece. As you guys saw, friend of the show, when he came over and he talked about, when he came over, when he talked about One Piece, like you could tell, like he loves it. He loves it so much. He like legitimately uh, is invested in it. And it's not just like, a dude that took on this job because he was like uh, formerly on like a uh, Marvel recreations. And then that's like the natural career trajectory for him. It wasn't like that at all. So anyway, there's also a bunch of this stuff to make Avatar the last interview, a serial, a serialized drama. Aang will not go on many detours looking for adventures like riding the elephant Koi. We essentially give him, this vision of what is going to happen. And he says, I have to get to the Northern water tribe to stop this from happening. People are mad about that too. Um, 